while I'm here getting unloaded and I got it fresh on my mind. I've had a couple of people saying in the comment section, I shared your videos about that plasma fire stuff and this ain't about sharing the plasma fire in my video, it ain't about me and it ain't even about the content of the plasma fires themselves. At least not in the way that you might think. It's not about if we only get enough people to wake up and we can show them the truth that we can change something about here and now and the way things are going to go down and we can change the direction of the way this is going to go. It ain't about that. The only reason to sound the alarm about the plasma fires is to be on record as someone who was able to see it and courageous enough to say it. Smart enough to see it, courageous enough to say it, and not in order to change the way that things are going here and now. And the other thing about the plasma fires and how it relates to the mask, and by the way, in my sermon called Fiery Sermon from the Valley of the Shadow, I relate the plasma fires to the mask six months ago. Now, you can all see what I can see. And that is that the people don't want the truth. Prior to... <clears throat> the mask and the COVID. All the truthers were like, oh man, if we only had a chance to show everyone the truth and we could wake them up. Now, you've had the chance to show them the truth. This is what we call a false flag, Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution, all in order to implement a solution that you would have vehemently opposed prior to them introducing you to the problem. And they introduce you to the problem, COVID. Get your reaction, what must be done about this? Save me, save me. Solution, vaccine. One, two, three. And the evidence is all around you and the numbers show it. And there are even professionals that you can get that realize <clears throat> something's going down here. What this has shown you is that your friends and family and the people around you don't want the truth. And you have uh, endless ammunition to fire truth, carpet bomb in the matrix with truth drops. And it's all around them and they don't want to see. So it's not a matter of, oh, the Illuminati have kept these secrets from us. And if only we had a chance to free the truth and we could show the people and the truth would set them free. The people don't want the truth. The truth is all around them now. And that's what this last year has shown us. And my question to you now is what is it going to take until the point where you're willing to let them go and accept that they're irredeemable? They will not go through those five sequential stages of grief to get to the point of acceptance. They're either stuck in denial or anger, etc. But what this has shown us, and what my question is to the rest of you, is how long is it going to take? Another year? Another ten? How much more truth do you think might need to be dropped all around them in order to wake them up? And for how much longer? until you're convinced they're not going to wake up. When you hit them in the head with a club and they don't flinch and you hit them in the head with another club 10 times and they still don't flinch, they're not sleeping, they're dead. <clears throat> and in Vanessa VA's most recent video, she had someone talking about the Mandela effect, talking about how some of y'all talking about how you're going to leave other people behind and they're going to be a separation and y'all going somewhere. I ain't leaving no one behind. Well, then you stay here with them. If those are your people, that's what's happening now is we're getting separated into islands of like-minded people. The law of attraction. And you're going to be on an island with people like yourself. So be the kind of person that you would like to be on an island with. But that is my question and my statement. One, that it's not about changing what's going down here and now. It's about getting your report card in order so you're on record as having been able to see it and having had the courage to say it when it was important. And just like the plasma fire all around me has shown me this over the last couple of years that you can, no matter how much truth you got, it doesn't matter if you got a microchip, a sun tunnel, a plasma fire, airborne aircraft carrier, all the black dot craft that were hanging out in the sky behind Mr. MB3 in the Woodbury fire. We'll go over more of that, but some of you remember what I'm talking about. These little black dot craft that were hanging out in the smoke above Mr. MB3 when he's saying, there's the Woodbury fire. Look right there behind me. See it right there? 
He's not pointing out smoke. The smoke is obvious. But what the plasma fire has shown me is that these people aren't asleep. They're dead. And they will engage in this type of denial that refuses to allow these truths that you show them to affect them in any way. You will not get a response from them. They will intentionally go out of their way to show you and to prove themselves right, that nothing's going to change my world, that it doesn't matter how much truth you present me, I will reinforce my current self-image and worldview. I am impervious to the truth. You have no ammunition that can penetrate my defenses. My mental immune system is perfect. No foreign substance can penetrate this body of information. How much more is it going to take? Another year? Do you think these people deserve another year? Another year of examples of truth all around them that they won't and ref will refuse to receive? Are you willing to put in another year with them side by side here in the trenches to see if maybe a couple more of them will wake up? How about another 10 years? At what point... Is there a return on investment? You're losing a return on investment of your own time, effort, energy, and resources. And at what point do we say, okay, empty the Petri dish in order to allow higher levels of consciousness to thrive within a cultural environment that allows it to be so, rather than surrounded by people who refuse to allow others to become enlightened and demand conformity to a groupthink because that's the only power that is inherently given to a person who decides to join the herd mentality is the power that comes from the power of numbers. And as soon as they join the herd mentality and accept the official point of view and explanation of the world, then they demand that everyone around them do the same because that's the only way that it empowers them. It is not self-evident truth that has its own inherent power. It is whatever the collective agrees upon is the truth. And the power is the fact that they all agree upon it. And in order for them to get power out of buying into this paradigm, they demand that you buy into it as well in order that they can have power out of buying into this collective paradigm and abandoning truth. <clears throat> and as the potter's wheel of paradigm spins, these people are like investors. Investors in the paradigm market who haven't let you know where they're really investing. Until the very last minute, just before the clay goes into the kiln, it's like Matt says, the cement is wet, but it's about to dry. The clay on the potter's wheel of paradigms is still wet, malleable. And just before it goes into the kiln to be hardened, all the investors in paradigm, the wizards that form realities, upstream from the markets in the area of consciousness, wait until right before it goes into the kiln, to try and reconfigure it real quick into a world order that they want it to be just before it goes into the kiln. And they don't let anyone else know what world order they're actually invested in and how they're going to try and reconfigure it real quick before it goes into the kiln and what paradigms they have invested in and have hedge funds against. But that's what's happening right now. We're on the verge of a whole new world. Economic growth. All wealth is knowledge. And all economic growth is learning. And we're on the brink of an economic growth cycle where we're going to learn and grow so fast it hurts. <clears throat> but this is provable. <clears throat> all throughout history, every major economic and minor economic boom in the, in the graph coincides with an increase in knowledge. All wealth is knowledge. All economic growth is learning. And through this paradigm shift, we're about to get a whole new knowledge set and a whole new wealth and a whole new economy to work within. Hold that. Hold that thought. Someone just knocked on my door. So the plasma fires have been my own personal version of the mask, which has been our collective initiation into an understanding that these people cannot receive the truth. You can spend another year or two trying to force them to see truths that they refuse, that they don't want to see, that they don't want to believe, and therefore that they will insist are not real. And for them, they are not. That makes you and I the new Illuminati, a very small group of people who know a lot more about the way this world works than those around us. And that's how this is the collective initiation. 
and this may be a separation of world views, war of the world views, and you can say, I'm not abandoning no one. That's fine, that's your choice. I said a long time ago, this is like a cymatics prison, and you're all getting the opportunity to have an early release. The warden is handing out deferred sentences for good behavior. And you can stick around here and peel potatoes and do laundry with these prisoners if you want. But some of us came in here to get these people free off the compound, out of the Jim Jones cult, to let them know that this is about to happen and you're about to have your opportunity. And when that moment comes, be still and know that I am God or it hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. Some of us came into this prison to try and get some of these prisoners out. Just like Harriet Tubman went back to the plantation that she was from and got over a hundred other people out, but before she would free you, she made sure to figure out whether or not you're a slave or a prisoner. A prisoner takes the first rope that comes to him, first opportunity to get off and get out of here that they can. A slave doesn't want off. A slave thinks that master provides them a good life and they couldn't do it on their own outside these walls. And they'll try and tell master, hey, there's someone over there trying to escape in order to get in better with Master, they will defend Jim Jones. When the OA team comes to break you free, they will defend Jim and say, Jim, the infiltrators have come to penetrate our paradise. Those are the shape-shifting, interdimensional, demonic. You're going to defend the slaves, the slave masters that gave you the paradigm that you believe in, that I spoke of in the sermon called fiery sermon from the valley of the shadow and if you're going to defend those preconceived ideas that were given to you by master who told you you're free and you haven't figured out yet that you're not then there's no hope for you and you'll never get free and it hurts to set you free but you'll never follow me if you want freedom you'll start thinking for yourself and as soon as you do it becomes very clear very quickly that you're on a plantation and all those thoughts that were given to you were given to you for a reason. In the days of slavery, it was illegal to teach a slave to read. And they were only given information to the extent which served the purposes of master. And not only could you not teach your other slaves to read, you couldn't teach your own slaves to read. Because your slaves might teach the slaves next door how to read and then we're all screwed. Because this plantation we keep them on is a mental prison. And as soon as you're willing to exit the hassle-free zone and you've overcome, what will others say about me? That's what the mask is, is getting you to be willing to exit the hassle-free zone and not give a fuck about what the people at work say about you or the people on the street. Wearing is caring, they say. In some of these places, this compartmentalized propaganda has gotten so thick that you go into places like Portland, Oregon, or some of these places in Colorado where the libtard propaganda is so thick they haven't had a break from it for a long time. They haven't seen a person without a mask for over a year. Those people are dangerous. They're more concerned about conformity to the group think and caring about what other people think and staying within that hassle-free zone than any attachment to the truth or morals or ethics and they are the kind of people that can be made to do horrific things and told that they are standing on the moral high ground while doing it, holding you down, doing anything to you because you're one of those diseased, fucking mask-free uh, COVID idiots. They will dehumanize you and turn you into something. That is why one of the tenets of compassion, of the science of compassion, is that there is only one source of all creation. And one force guiding all action. Because as soon as you allow something to be evil and of a different source, that gives you license to withdraw your compassion from that thing and do anything to it. These people have already been given license to withdraw their compassion from anything that the party identifies as evil. <clears throat> Starting with white... Male, conservative, Christian, heterosexual, right wing, red coat, freedom loving, flag waving, Bible thumping, God fearing, gun toting, right wing, red coat, conservative, Christian, Republicans. Those are the evil ones. And those people that haven't broke free from that are part of a collective mind, a hive mind that cares more about conformity to the group consensus of what's moral and ethical and right and maintaining their membership 
in good standing status within that group than they are any personal freedoms or any truth that they have of their own. They have abandoned themselves to the point where they have no more individuality. All they have is their membership within the group. I'm going to bring this to a close right now. Okay, not quite yet. Joni Mitchell sings, Don't Interrupt the Sorrow. Truth goes up in vapors, steeples lean. Winds of change, patriarchs, snug in your Bible Belt dreams. God goes up the chimney like childhood Santa Claus. The good slaves love the good book. A rebel loves a cause. Anima rising, queen of queens. Wash my guilt of Eden, wash and balance me. They've told you anyone worshiping a feminine deity is a pagan and that uh, we're given license to go burn them at the stakes as witches because they're evil. And I told my friend about a year and a half, two years ago, my artist friend who has the muse that she channels, when I was telling her about all this, and she's like, so what does it matter? Why do I care about any of this? And I said, so that we don't get burned at the stake next time they have a witch hunt because they really like to do witch hunts. She's like, yeah, there ain't gonna never be any such thing like that again. I'm pretty sure in that sermon that I call Fiery Sermon from the Valley of the Shadow, I acknowledge that I'll be one of the first witches burned at the stake for defending those green serpent, dragon, demon, interdimensional, shape-shifting, satanic, luciferian. They got a long list of labels they put on things that gives them license to withdraw their compassion from that thing. And that's why within the science of compassion, it's only got five tenets. One of them is that you must believe that there is only one source of all creation and only one force guiding all action because as soon as there is the other, you have the duality and the polarity that allows you to put one on the pedestal and one in the pit. One's the golden child, one's the scapegoat. There is a new day on the other side of all of this and it is a better world but you have to be willing to leave this one behind.